Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name is Brad. Today's video is going to be an upgrade to the lathe. Uh, I need to put a new motor in it and it's going to be a full uh, motor replacement and a VFD installation. Um, if you're familiar with the, the YouTube machining Facebook page, uh, you might have seen some pictures that I posted of my old motor and uh, you know the whole the whole issue I was facing. But a little bit of the backstory is the motor came with a one horsepower motor uh, when I bought it from the you know from the previous owner. And these machines, these South Bend 13s, come from the fat. Well, they came from the factory with a two horsepower motor. So I was running you know basically at half power, single phase. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, it had a lot of bad bearing noise. The, the motor had a lot of bearing noise, squealing and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I knew that when I first put the, the machine back together. So I, I procrastinated long enough. So it's, uh, you know, it's time to get on with it. Um, my impatience got the best of me over the winter. And I found a five horsepower motor. And uh, I bought it on eBay. I put it in. And then I came to the realization, I, I was talking with Stan, and came to the realization that my drum switch was underpowered. It was rated at uh, like a uh, one and a half or, or maybe two horsepower, I don't know. But I couldn't use the five horsepower motor with that drum switch. To replace that drum switch would have been costly. So I figured if I was going to spend any kind of money, I might as well just get a, a VFD, which was what I originally wanted to do. Uh, you know, for, for the speed control and the quiet operation and all that. So, long story short, I wound up buying another motor, which was a two horsepower motor, properly sized, three phase, 220, got it on eBay for a good price. Um, I found the, the right VFD. Uh, I went with the kind that, you know, Stan has uh, videos on the, the uh, lens. Uh, S uh, vector drives, whatever they're called, SM vector, <clears throat> and and if you might have seen on Stan's channel as well, he created a little a little uh, goodie pack for me with wires and connectors and everything, and I I really am, you know, I'm in his debt for that. Um, so, you know, let's get started. We're going to take the motor out. We're going to put the new motor in. We're going to wire up the control box. We're going to mount the uh, the new outlet on the wall, and uh, you know, and and perform the upgrade. So let's get started. Now here's all our parts for the motor upgrade. We've got our our motor. We've got our new box, which has a forward and reverse switch, a speed pot, e stop, some name plates. We've got our main wire, our control wire. Uh, the VFD itself, it's a lens vector drive, 2 horsepower. Um, and we got all the goodies that, uh, that uh, Stan sent us, which include all the zip ties and all the little connectors, the uh, wire bushings, the box, outlet plug, wiring diagram, and Stan also did send the, um, the name plates and all the wire here. So. Time to drop the old motor. We'll get that out. We'll get this guy in. And uh, then the fun begins with this. This is going to be a nice in-depth step-by-step procedure um, for anybody else who's going to be putting a VFD on their lathe. So let's get started. Disconnecting these wire nuts here from the old motor. They got some kind of... Uh, like a cloth tape on them and it's proven to be tricky to get it off but I'm winning <clears throat> none of this is easy to do laying on a floor I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there who could sympathize with that motor's now disconnected got it all done so I'm gonna tap this shaft out and this should drop down but what I did is I put the ratchet strap on there to pick up on the pressure so the shaft will come out a little bit easier so I'm gonna do that off camera I'm gonna tap it out and drop the motor down all 
Whew. Okay, as you can see, it's out. I wanted to capture just how out of breath I was. Uh, that thing is a beast, man. I don't know how much it weighs, but I'm guessing somewhere's around 60, 70 pounds for the motor itself. Add another 10, 15 um, for that cast iron motor plate. But holy God, that was a that was a fight to get that out. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> let's catch our breath. Then let's get it uh, unbolted, and we'll get the new motor uh, onto the plate. We'll get it laid out, and we'll start drilling some holes. So this thing is going to sit here on the shop floor with zero purpose. Um, you know, I, I hate to throw a shameless plug here for, for, you know, a motor, but if anybody needs a motor, a brand new single phase Baldor um, five horsepower motor, contact me and, you know, we'll work out the details and, you know, you'll get a good deal, that's for sure. Um, I, even have a, I even have a pulley for it all ready to go double pulley if you need it so other than that it's just gonna sit on the shop floor and collect dust and this is a big heavy paperweight <laughs> by comparison now we have our two horsepower three-phase Baldor it's a lot less <laughs> in size and in weight I think this thing might be I don't know 35 40 pounds the most I mean very easily maneuvered around. Uh, all right, the next step here is going to be to lay out the, um, the the holes in this, and I believe this is a uh, let's see here, it's a 145T frame, so it's considerably smaller. So let's put this thing on the mount and see what we got. not lucky enough to have a an existing set of holes drilled this thing had this thing had two sets of holes already and then I put uh, for this next motor or this previous motor I drilled some holes so this thing's gonna look like Swiss cheese when it's done You don't say. Oh wow. Oh yeah. I think we <laughs> I think we have our holes drilled. I believe we got our holes drilled. Uh, I, I need bigger I need bigger bolts, that's for sure. But yeah, look at that. This was originally a uh, a 145T frame, uh, you know, drilled for a 145T frame. Oh, awesome. Oh, sometimes the machining gods smile down on you, and this is definitely one of those times. I did not want to lay this thing out again and go through all the rigmarole of that. Yeah, I'm happy. That's cool. All right, let me find the bolts that fit this, and we'll get it screwed down and put back into place. Get it ready for wiring. Got all our new hardware ready to bolt her down. Hmm. Looks like these holes need to be opened up a little bit. Ah. <laughs> so I'm just covering this up a little bit here. Prevent any 
chips from going down in there. So I'm going to tip this forward so the grills aren't sitting straight up. Wanting to take all these metal chips in. Excellent. All right, let's pick up where we left off now. This video is brought to you by Ray's Garage. You can see I'm pimping my buddy Ray in his garage. Ray's got the garage, I got the basement. All right, this is gonna take a long time, so I'll come back when these are all screwed down. All right, it's time to get the, the uh, motor and put it back into the lathe now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the motor we're going to place it down there into the cabinet leg, resting on the cushion. I'm going to rig up the ratchet strap, hoist it up into place, and then uh, attach the pivot pin. I'll do all that off camera and I'll get back with you when I'm done. All right, motor is in. We got the uh, link belts on, in place, got the tension uh, adjustment screws all in place. Um, it's time to run the uh, the liquid tight conduit now from the junction box in the back of the cabinet leg to the motor. So I have to size the wire, size the liquid tight conduit, and get that cut. Went under the cabinet leg and I measured, put a little mark with the sharpie there. Uh, this end right here is going to be going into the cabinet leg. This end will accept the. Where is it? Uh, this end over here and that's going to go into the motor so we'll get it cut I'm going to cut it a tiny little bit big so this is the motor side this is the cabinet leg side. Now what we need to do is um, this SO cord that I have here with the with the outer um, shielding on here it won't go through the the opening here in the conduit so I'm gonna just split this remove it and uh, we'll get it we'll get that in. We got this little wire clamp here which is gonna attach to the um, to the junction box in the back of the machine. everything loose. All right, let's get this thing connected now to the box in the back. So this part of the liquid tight conduit screws onto like a little stub. I don't know the proper terminology for it, but it goes through the uh, the casting wall and it bolts in with a little nut and then it has some internal threads that I could screw the conduit to. That's pretty tight. Let's see how it... Alright. A lot of room. We got plenty of room. Alright, now what we need to do is drop the wire through and snake it. <laughs> snake it through. That ought to be fun. See, I don't want any of this to come apart. over. 
What a pain it is to try to start these. Okay. Now, the fun part. Snaking it through the conduit. Oh, there we go. There we go. Got it. Okay, got enough here, got enough here. We'll have to adjust the tension, it's a little hard. I think that's just a seasonal thing. All right, so here's a shot with the box all done. The uh, cover's on it. We got the SO cable, main cable, clamped in place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I, I left a lot of, um, a lot of extra wire here so what I'm gonna do um, I don't know if I'm gonna do it now but in the future I'm gonna snip it and I'm gonna put a female and a male plug uh, so I could disconnect the lathe right from the VFD and move it if I needed to alright we got the the SO cord is now through the junction box we have it snaked through the conduit it's ready to be wired to the motor um, I'm gonna do that after I wire the VFD up that'll that'll come afterwards um, so yeah, got a, a big length of, of SO cable here. Um, I'll just snake it right over to the bench, wire up the VFD, it should be real easy. We got the new outlet box mounted. I, I shot a piece of wood to the concrete wall with a Hilti gun. Got it secured nice, it's solid, rock solid installation. Um, so the next thing now is to just wire up the VFD. I got the, the bench all cleaned off, ready for the next operation, you know, so we could work um, you know, with a, a clear head here and a nice clean environment. Once the VFD is done, then we'll wire up the motor. You know, we'll connect the motor wires to the uh, to the SL cord wires. So let's get started with the VFD now. Mm -hmm. 